we speak spontaneously, quickly, and comprehensively. By comprehensively, mean, we mean uh, the language should be understandable for the others without any problem, and this is the matter of comprehensibility, with a few number of errors. If you stop and pause for a long time, if you have a lot of errors in your speaking, so fluency is not happening in this way. When accuracy focuses on elements of phonology, grammar, and discourse in a spoken language. So if you want to speak, you need to be careful about both fluency and accuracy. Fluency in language means speaking easily, reasonably, quickly, and without having to stop and pause. This is something that in IELTS speaking, we call it speaking naturally. So the matter and the course, uh, sorry, the, the session aim is how to speak fluently. Let's see, uh, there are a couple of tips for you today about speaking fluently. I know that uh, one of the concerns of language learners at, at university or language school is how to speak fluently. So the first step is listen to yourself. If you listen to yourself, it could be a, a very good way to improve fluency for yourself. You can record your voice also. Judge yourself based on some criteria to see whether you pause a lot in your speaking, whether you had a lot of, uh, I don't know, error correction, or may, maybe the speed of speaking, as you mentioned. You can compare your recording uh, from uh, actually the previous uh, time to now and to see how improvement did you have in your speaking. You know that humans are natural mimics, so you can have some sort of mimics and it will uh, get you better and better in your fluency. Number two is read aloud. Uh, you know, um, I know that some of you would be teachers because most of the students of university who are studying English, they will go to the field of teaching and maybe linguistic something. Uh, sometimes you ask your students to speak, to read aloud, and sometimes you got your student to have silent reading. By reading aloud, the fluency is really important. If you read aloud, you can, you can hear yourself and your instructors and teachers also can hear you. So this way, if there is any problem, this is exactly, uh, okay. If, if there is any problem, you can listen to yourself, your teacher and instructors can listen to you, and this is a very good way. You can do this as a practice for yourself. Every day, for five to 10 minutes, start reading a newspaper, reading a textbook aloud for yourself. Record your voice and evaluate and judge yourself. The third, the third tip for you to speak fluently is sing along to English, uh, listen along or sing along to English songs while you're driving or even while you are in the shower. You know that on the shower, everybody is very good speaker and very good singer. I would like you to type the name of your favorite singer in the chat box. Who is your favorite singer? I would like you to type it in the chat box. Is it, I don't know, Justin Bieber? Is it uh, Shakira, Adele? So I would like you to type some names of your favorite singers in the chat box. Justin Bieber. Rockham, Parkosh, Alan Walker. So if these are your favorite, uh, Yuan, Enrique, oh, Enrique Iglesias, I really love him. If, if you are interested in listening to this, Taylor Swift.
sir. Ahmed, sir. Oh, hello again. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes I'm sir. terribly sorry for uh, some sort of disconnection. And can you see my slide now? Yes. OK, the, four, the fourth tip was actually uh, watch short video clips and pause and repeat after them. You know, the way that you imitate the speakers of the native language can really helpful, can be really helpful for you for your fluency. Uh, sometimes you can play to learn. This is a really uh, good strategy for learning fluency and learning speaking. So let's play. I would like you to do these things. You can do it for yourself now or you can do it later. Uh, you can draw the face of your favorite celebrity or hero on your finger and talk to your partner, introduce yourself to your partner. For example, I'm Justin Bieber. I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm Madonna. I'm uh, Taylor Swift. I'm Cristiano Ronaldo. When you talk to your partner from the tongue of some other people, it would be really good and less stress are being dominated by you. So this is the way that you can do it yourself at home or in your classes. Uh, this is the way that uh, really helpful for your speaking and fluency. Why? Because as I told you before, when, when you are role playing, when you are talking, uh, when you are role playing and you are talking uh, from the tongue of somebody else, you have less stress because here, you are not, for example, uh, I don't know, Peria. You are not uh, Shampathy. You are yourself. You are not yourself. You are playing the role of somebody else. So it would be really uh, less stressful for you. You can do it. I don't know whether have you started. In, have you ever had this play in your classes or not? Does anybody uh, have any experience of this sort of game in his or her class? that you draw the, uh, the, the, the face of your favorite singer or your favorite celebrity and you start talking to your friends. No, no, you can do it for yourself. When you are talking on the campus of university to your friends, you can do it. It really helps you and it is really, really um, some sort of, uh, I can tell you, pleasant and interesting for you. OK. Uh, sometimes you can have some uh, some other games like one sentence story. You talk to your partner and you just write one sentence story. Can you type one sentence story or activate your voice now and tell me in one sentence just in one sentence, a shorter story. It's a bit difficult, but I would like you to do it. Uh, I'm sorry, is it possible for participants to activate their microphone? 
Is it possible for them to activate their microphone? If this is uh, possible, so I would like somebody uh, starts his or her microphone and tell me one sentence story. Is there anybody who wants to activate his or her microphone and share his or her one sentence story with us? Anybody? Oh, it seems nobody. OK, no problem. Uh, another way that you can do is this. You can um, start talking in just one sentence. When you want to talk in one sentence, it's a bit difficult. You need to be very careful about the content to, to be presented, accuracy, and also fluency. This is really good way for you to uh, to improve your fluency. Sometimes you need to exercise your mouth muscles. You know the vocal cords and all the organs on your uh, I don't I don't know uh, on, on your uh, vocal cords and also your tongue, your lips or something need to be exercised so that they can present and play the uh, target language sounds and sentences very clearly and automatically. You know that English probably uses some sound that don't have in your first language. There are some differences between the first language and the second language. To make these sounds accurately, you need to develop the muscles in your exercises. Let me show you some examples. In Farsi, in, in language Farsi, maybe the sound TH, we don't have sound TH. That is sometimes V and sometimes F. So it's a bit difficult for Persian or Farsi speakers to pronounce that or thank you. If you practice this, it would be a sort of automatic it, or it would be automatically produced for you. Uh, I would like you to tell me if there is any sound that you have it in English, but you don't have it in Hindi. Can you type it in the chat box? As I told you, TH, we don't have TH in Farsi. In our, our language, we don't have TH. So F or V are difficult to be pronounced. And when, when there is something difficult to be pronounced, you need to stop. And you cannot speak very fluently. So my question for you is this. In Hindi language, uh, are there a Z? Uh, in Chinese, maybe re is, in Chinese, re is a bit difficult. So I would like you to tell me if there is any sound.